What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about my opinions on whether or not the stock market is in a bull trap. We're also going to be going over the futures right now. What are stocks looking to do today based on my technical analysis in terms of the futures and kind of my opinion on everything going on right now in the market as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally keeping an eye on. So if you guys enjoy this video, all I ask from you is to go down below and hit that like button. And if you enjoy the content in a couple of minutes and you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I upload videos every single day onto this channel regarding the stock market, personal finance, investing, trading, stuff like that. So just a quick little rundown on what's been going on over these past couple of days. We noticed how the stock market, based on the NQ here, the NASDAQ, it's been rallying, right? Noticing on the ES here, the S&P 500, we noticed that's been rallying as well. And the Dow Jones, the slash YM here, this is the Dow Jones future over the past couple of days. It's been rallying as well. And for all you that have been paying that have been paying attention to the stock market, to some news uh, you know, that affects the stock market, you saw that Jerome Powell, the federal chair reserve, uh, the chairman, um, he said that if 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 trade war uh trade war tensions with China between China and the US continue to worsen, he's open to potentially cutting the interest rate. And this popped uh pumped a lot of optimism into the stock market, hence why we've seen this ridiculous rally over these past couple of days. And what this has caused, guys, is it, it's caused a lot of false hope in my personal opinion. And I talked about this deeper in yesterday's video. Video, but it's pumped a lot of you know false optimism in my personal opinion into investors that have kind of clouded that's kind of clouded their judgment regarding everything that's going on right now. Just because the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said he's potentially cutting rates, this doesn't really negate everything else, all this other craziness that's going on, right? We're still in a trade war with China, the tariffs are still being imposed, there's still a lot of a lot of drama going on between the two countries. I don't think they're coming to a trade deal anytime soon. We're seeing back and forth negotiations that are really leading to nowhere based you know, over these past couple of months. We got recent news that Mexico is being slapped with tariffs and those negotiations are continuing today on the 6th of June. If they don't come to any agreement on the 10th of June, 5% tariffs are going to be slapped on Mexico that are then going to increase every single month up to 25% um, in the month of October, if I'm um, if I'm correct, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, the year of 2019. So pretty much, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on right now regarding other nations in the global economy, and I'm personally seeing these things worsen over time, at least in the short term here within three five, six, seven months. And the market, again, has rallied based off of this slim chance of a rate cut that we might not even get. Who knows if we even get this, guys? And definitely, if we do get this, I think it's going to be a positive catalyst for the markets. But again, you can't deny what is going on besides this slim, brief, optimism that we got. There's still a lot of negative things that are going on in terms of the global economy that I think will have a negative impact on the stock market. So is the stock market in a bull trap right now, right? Is the stock market in a bull trap where we are right now looking to potentially trap some longs that think the markets are miraculously going to recover now? And I personally think it is in a bull trap right now. And let's go over some technicals here um, that really could... Uh, 
help us really understand where the markets could be going here over the next couple of days. Let's go to the S&P. Actually, let's go to the ES right now, which is the E-mini S&P 500 index futures. This is open um, throughout the night so you guys can understand where the markets are potentially pushing, where they could potentially open on the next day. So right now, again, I'm recording this video with about 30 minutes left to the market open. We notice how the ES right now is kind of flat. It's up a dollar seventy-five, up 0.06. We're noticing the break above this 180 SMA here on the 20-day, or rather the 90-day, 2-hour chart. But if we're going back to the 184-hour chart, we're still trending under the 180 simple moving average resistance here. And the RSI is very, very, very overbought here at the 70 threshold. And guys, this is kind of alarming to me, right? We've had the 2-3 straight days of really strong rallying here, bringing up that RSI. That's really putting us at a point that we've been rejected at over the past couple of weeks. Notice how we haven't broken out of the 180 SMA since, when was this? The beginning of we really haven't been above it since the beginning of May in 2019. I can really notify, you know, a couple different uh, rejection spots here. One, two, three, four, you know, five. This could be the sixth point of rejection right here under the 180 SMA, which is what I'm waiting for and looking to see, you know, are we going to get signs of this today? If we slowly start to trend down into the 2810 level, 2805, that in my opinion is going to be a pretty con confirming factor of the ES, the S&P getting rejected there. The NASDAQ right now is currently down $2, down about 0.03%, and we're fiddling with this 50 SMA right now. We notice how we broke above it. Now we're looking to consolidate above it. Um, you know, we broke out of it as a resistance, looking to hold it as a support now. We're also holding the 7220, 7230 level of support as well. I would say, you know, if we do end up breaking down like this, maybe breaking back down to the 7100 level, breaking that 50 SMA level of support, I would say this is a pretty big downwards move on the NASDAQ. That would be, in my opinion, the continuation of this downtrend here. And you guys kind of understand, based off these technicals here, that we are still overall downtrending right now. So this really could be a trap that a lot of people are falling for, right? You may be buying up some of these stocks that have been falling down due to the overall market falling down. And if the market continues this sell-off, you can be trapped in those stocks and you may have to bag hold them. You may have to take a loss. And obviously, I don't advise bag holding whatsoever. I, I really advise taking a loss of about 1%, 2%. But let's say you're underwater 5 6 7% and you want to wait it out. This can lead into some really negative trading habits that, that, that you might start to open up and start to implement, which is really not good because bag holding can really kill your account. And let's say you get trapped at the top here and we start to sell off, you can very well be inclined to bag hold, which again will lead you to losing money, having that money tied up, which you won't be able to take advantage of other opportunities with that money if it's tied up in a bag holding uh you know trade investment which is again it's just not a good thing right so be careful at these levels i personally think this is most likely a bull trap. I'm not going to 100% definitively say that because no one can say anything with certainty, but my gut feeling is telling me this is a bull trap as of right now when I'm recording this video. So let's go over to, let's say, some other time frames very quickly. We notice how on the 20-day chart, we're actually above the 180 SMA. So I would say for a sell-off here, we need to see a break um, down down below this 180 SMA support and again back into the 7100 level for the NASDAQ. Going over here to the slash YM, the Dow Jones futures, you can't deny the fact that they are looking pretty bullish here um, on the short-term basis. We're seeing a bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, but overall, guys, you know, judging on this line right here, we are still 
still downtrending, and we would really need to see a break into the higher, not really higher, but into the 26,000 level for the Dow Jones to be fully recovering to the upside, in my personal opinion. You know, let's say we slowly get rejected here. We slowly start to break below that 50 SMA on the 20-day one-hour chart. That's going to be really a continuation here of the downtrend. Just keep an eye on that, guys. You know, if we do get pushed, that's a continuation in my opinion. Going over here to the 184 hour, we can see, you know, overall the Dow Jones is still in a descending pattern with the resistance being right at that trend line that I just drew out for you all and also under that 180 simple moving average resistance. So keep an eye on those levels, guys. Very, very, very strong levels of resistance. Right now, we're up about $8, up 0.03%. So what the pre-market futures are telling me right now, especially since they aren't up a ton right now, you know, they're kind of um, hovering where they closed yesterday, right around, you know, break even. What that's telling me is that we are seeing some resistance at these levels we could potentially be getting rejected at. So if the futures were up like 1%, right now let's say we were up here you know that would lead me to a different conclusion but the fact that we are kind of struggling I guess you can say to push up here green um, pre-market again that's telling me we may be getting rejected here slowly but surely so those are um, that's kind of my my kind of take on the market right now I'm, I'm being very very cautious right now the market's been obviously very choppy with all this news that's been going on you know the volatility has been there which makes it a nice day trading market but it's kind of hard sometimes during markets like this to predict longer term trends but I am doing the best that I can here and I know a lot of you guys out there are doing the best that you can as well with what the market is currently giving us. So today, like I said in yesterday's video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on some of these short ETFs that have a lot of margin of profit um, due to the big market rally that we've been seeing here. So one of them is SQQQ. This one goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. This one moves three times the direction of the NASDAQ. So let's say the NASDAQ sells off 2% today. This is going to be up 6%. That's kind of how it moves, right? It goes up when the NASDAQ is selling off. And we can see the very big dip buy that we're currently seeing right now of about 10% on uh, SQQQ. Another one that I'm watching is... What is it, guys? SPXS. And this is the same thing as SQQQ. It goes up when the markets are selling off. But this one trades in specific on the S&P 500, the SPX. Hence why SPX is in the ticker symbol, right? Notice how, you know, we saw the big sell-off from the peak at about $23 down to where we are right now at about $20.71. That's about a 10% margin that was opened on this big pullback. So if my theory plays out, right, if my my analysis here plays out that the markets do continue this sell-off, these are going to offer a crap ton of money uh, potential, especially for day trading, right? This can run 5, 6, 7% in a day. If we do see a market dump, that can really help out a lot of people in terms of grabbing that margin of profit for their trading day. And that's what I'm personally planning on doing, right? Some other stocks that I'm watching, um, not necessarily ETFs, although a lot of these market ETFs, most of them I am looking to track uh, and follow every single day, you know, like TVIX, UVXY, the volatility uh, uh, ETFs here, you know, TQQQ, that's a bull ETF, um, UVXY, we just said that one, and uh, QQQ, that's another bull ETF. You know, other than this, I'm keeping my eyes closely on um, j and J. I've been talking about this one. We're at a critical spot under that 50 SMA. If we break here, that could be a very good play. I'm looking at Coca-Cola for a potential pullback to $50. I don't know if we'll get it, especially since we're consolidating here pre-market. Either two things can happen here, right? If we consolidate and then pop pre-market, we may be headed to $52 a share. We may be just continuing to push up here, which 
you know, that could be a nice breakout trade. But if we end up pulling back here, which is what I personally rather see, you know, and we look to retest the 50 level old resistance as a new support, and we slowly start to see consolidation and a reversal there, that can open up a very nice um, dip buy opportunity for Coca-Cola, which has been doing very well throughout this market pressure that we've been seeing to the downside over the past couple of weeks. So Coca-Cola, Mc, uh, not McDonald's, uh, J&J, those are two, I guess you can say, value plays that I'm looking to potentially trade um, You know, over these next couple of days. Of course, the inverse ETFs, those are always on my watch list, guys. Watch for crude oil. You know, Are we going to continue this downtrend on crude oil here? Are we going to rebound DWT, UWT? Those are going to be two inverse ETFs that are are going to be very, very um, volatile, especially as crude oil continues to get clobbered here. So Tesla is another one that I'm watching. Um, you know, we can see Tesla's finally showing a little bit of a sign of a breakout here, right? We noticed we're back into the $200 level today. We're back up to 205. So you know, Tesla. Pretty interesting right now on a technical basis on multiple different time frames here. We're noticing on the 180 4-hour chart, we're breaking the 50 SMA resistance here. So now a pullback, a retest on the 50, and maybe a run-up to the 180 SMA. That could be a nice little gap fill trade on uh, Tesla. On the 90-day, we're noticing we're right under the 180 SMA. If we break that, that could be a pretty big breakout. So Tesla right now, in my opinion... And kind of what my gut feeling and my intuition is telling me right now, there might be a huge short squeeze on um, Tesla here. For those of you guys that don't know, um, when shorts, they start to cover their position, that ends up pushing up the, uh, the stock very high, right? Very, very high because if they're buying back the stock, they're covering their position. That's going to just squeeze the stock and then continue to push it up. And that's why... Potentially, we might see a huge price increase on um, Tesla here over the next couple of weeks. I've been seeing a lot of people saying short squeeze on Tesla is coming, and I'm personally watching for it, and I would love to know what you guys would uh, potentially think about that down below in the comment section. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. I'm getting really excited for the trading day. Markets looking for a potential sell-off today. Let's see if we do get it. If not, we'll readjust. I'll readjust my uh, my plan, and I'll talk about it in the later video today. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, drop a comment down below, leave a comment rather, and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all do great today. Peace out.